Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to tell you about Solo Mid Nymphora. But before we start with that, let me give you a quick history lesson on that hero. Nymphora got released a while back during the beta of Heroes of New Earth. In her first build, Nymphora's seal actually gave her attack and movement speed, which resulted in some fun carry Nymphora builds. They later removed that attack and movement speed bonus and replaced it with a lot longer of a stun. This stun was ridiculous to the point of stunning for up to 5 seconds and dealing like 4 or 500 damage. That Nymphora of course got quickly nerfed, but while she was in that state of being ridiculously overpowered, a lot of players played her in the mid lane. Well, she eventually got nerfed and put into the state she's now. Widely regarded as being an amazing support hero, but only that. But I myself never actually thought that solo mid Nymphora is that bad of an idea. And that's why I have tried it in a few games recently and here you go, these are my results and my tips on playing a solo mid Nymphora. Of course, if we want to do something as ridiculous as going mid with Nymphora, we first have to think about why would we do that? Why is it a good idea? Well, I got some answers for that. First of all, Nymphora got amazing laning potential. She really does. Using a combination of Nymphora's Grace and Nymphora's Seal can shut down pretty much any enemy. Mini heroes won't even be able to get close to the creep wave anymore. On the other side, ranged heroes will also have a whole lot of trouble going up against that Nymphora Seal. Because first of all, it got amazing range, great stun and quite a nice amount of damage. If you combine that with auto hits, you can really put up some pressure on your enemy. Additionally, Nymphora has quite decent attack damage and also quite a good animation. Coupled with a range of 600, she is easily capable of going up against any hero if it comes down to last hitting. But wait! There's more. Her ultimate allows her to globally gank. Globally gank. In this clip, you're going to see me gank in a way only Nymphora can. Before Pebbles even realizes that I'm missing, I already am at the bottom lane, throwing down, down my Nymphora seal and also my auto hits onto the enemies, allowing us to, yeah, kind of destroy the Ravenor and chase the Voodoo Chester away. I then decide, hmm, top lane, they just managed to get a kill themselves, but Morax is, is still staying around. So I'm gonna buy a TP, teleport up to the top, Feeds a mana to the monarch, allowing him to gank yet again, using both of his abilities onto the Moraxus. He initiates, I throw down my Nephora seal just to stun him a little bit more, also for some nice additional damage, and we allow for second archer to finish him off. No other hero in the game could have gotten two kills in this fashion. I notice that Hapringer, while pushing, almost kills the Black Rider. Using my ultimate, I still manage to get that kill. I then help out Hellbringer with pushing this tower, which quickly drops. I then notice that at the bottom lane there's a fight going on. I instantly teleport to the bottom and start helping out Revenor and Glacius. I start off with Phoenix and mana to the Revenor and Revenor instantly uses that to initiate onto the Gauntlet. Gauntlet gets stunned by also by mana for a seal and kind of drops instantly. Now we are chasing down the Kinesis. I feed some mana or movement speed to the Revenor. Revenor uses that movement speed to catch up with the Kinesis and take him out. Then also he uses the mana I gave him with the two previous Numphora's Crazes to take out the Fate and get a quad kill. All of that may sound amazing and you may ask yourself, well, why don't I see Numphora in the mid more often? There's a simple reason for that. Even though I mentioned that her damage isn't bad, it's not the best, so a hero like Silhouette is gonna outlast her tail quite easily. And also she is very squishy, as you could see, Pebbles just kind of destroyed me right there. Even though Nymphora mid has some quite significant weaknesses, I still think it's a good strategy to use and it's definitely a whole lot of fun. But I didn't quite tell you a lot about the strategy itself yet, did I? So let's start off with the simple skill build. You want to go for the Nymphora Seal first and the Nymphora's Grace second. And you just want to max out these two first. Get the heal at level 10 
and then go for that. Nymphora kind of has the demented shaman problem where all of her abilities are just so amazing that you kind of want to have all of them. Going mid Nymphora is gonna allow you to do so pretty early on in the game, which is amazing. As for items, I personally like to go for one mark of the novice, two minor totems and one stack of runes of the blight as my starting items. I'm still gonna have a little bit left to rush an early bottle, which is always pretty helpful. Though it's not as important on Nymphora to be honest, because she already has unlimited mana anyways. But a bottle still gives significant advantages, which is why I like going for that either way. I then go for Steam Boots, Grave Locket and power supply. In no particular order, but I usually get the marches first. I then proceed to finish my sacrificial stone and from there you pretty much got infinite choices. Depending on the game you may want to go for a health lower if you need more damage, a puzzle box if you need a reveal, or maybe a storm spirit or a tablet of command if you need a little bit more utility. I want to talk about one item in particular right here, which is the Sacrificial Stone. I love this item. It's amazing. It gives you so, so much and is so cheap. Invest in that. You are not going to regret it. It makes the hero just so much tankier and helps out in every aspect. It's just amazing. Get it. It's crazy. Another item that's kind of noteworthy would be the Staff of the Masters, which allows for some fun stuff. It's not always the best option, but if you are winning by a significant margin, it just may be a fun choice. But don't get too stuck up on items. Nymphora, even though you're going to play her as a solo hero, she won't farm. You don't want to farm, you are mostly gonna gank, because that's what she's good at. And especially good during the early stages of the game because unlike other ganking heroes she can't kill on her own. She can help with killing a hero but she won't be able to take them out solo. So that's one of the downsides. We are now going to get to the last segment of this video which would be team fights. During team fights you don't want to be in the middle of the fight obviously because she is very very squishy. And all of her abilities have a huge impact, so you want to cast them as many times as possible. They also don't have the longest of cooldowns, but you still can't spam them. So stay alive, it's important. In this clip I noticed that in the top lane there was a fight going on, Morexus got taken out. So I teleport up there, trying to make something happen. I quickly take out the glaciers with really no effort at all. Now Scout and Empath are still running around and also Geomancer is coming in. Geomancer is gonna use his dick to stun the Pebbles. Pebbles is gonna get taken out by the Scout ultimate. Empath starts shredding my life and I run away from that. I would rather take the stun than lose more HP. I then finish off the Geomancer with a few auto hits and start running away from the Scout. Using my bottle to refresh my health and I kind of predict the scout right there that he's gonna initiate onto me, use my stun to stun both the empath and the scout. We managed to get both kills and win that team fight. Pebbles and Moraxus are pushing the mid lane. I teleport into the jungle next to them to start the fight. I then throw down my Nymphora seal, trying to hit both of them. I don't manage to do so because Flux pushes the Pebbles out of my stun. But I kind of stay in the back in this fight because both of these heroes could very easily be able to just insta-kill me. You have to be very careful with that. I then teleport to the top lane, ready to help out over there as well. For second Archer manages to take out the Midas. I throw down an Infra Seal onto the Voodoo Chester. Voodoo Chester is dropping and another easy kill for the Forsaken Archer. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this style of video. I just wanted to try something new. It's a lot shorter, but it's a, a lot more effort to actually create. So I would like it a lot if you guys could maybe drop a like and share this video with someone that you think might be interested. Currently on your screen, you can see a link. This link is also going to be in the description, right next to my Facebook link, which you should click and like. <laughs> but this link is in the description, it's the link to the guide I created 
using the Heroes of New of Guide system. I don't have anything typed out, but it has all of the items and the skill build in there. It's not the most complex thing, but maybe if you want to use it, I think it could be just useful. <laughs> so, I don't know, I don't use guides, but I, I know that some people do. So I thought it's not a whole lot of effort, I'm just gonna create that as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.